Hey guys and welcome back. After a bit of a break on the channel, I would like to try a slightly different format of videos, which will be the review of the books that I'm reading and that I'm finding interesting or noteworthy, right? So the first book that I've picked for review today is Serverless Architectures on AWS. I've bought this book recently for 40 euros, which is a pretty heavy price, especially considering it's not a very, a very big book. It has around 230 pages, but the format, the structure of this book is pretty interesting. So it is not your typical a list of patterns or a cookbook, but rather here authors decided to go with the real world scenarios, real world companies that are going through their cloud journeys and talk about why they decided to go through to serverless architectures, what kind of challenges that they were facing that made them consider the move, what kind of architectures they came up with. And for me, this information, it is really priceless, right? So nothing helps you learn more about a technology or about certain domain, like reviewing the actual architectures and actual steps, actual journeys of the company. So it's nothing compared to the examples and reference architectures. It's a completely different story. So, but what about this book, right? So let me really quickly review the structure. The biggest and most interesting part is part number two, which is the use cases. And there the authors, they are going to review three companies. The first one is a cloud guru, which is a very well known online educational platform. And I think it was originally built completely on serverless or almost completely on serverless, but they made a certain journey to move away from the monolithic database to the microservices serverless architectures, which made lots of sense in their context. The second one is Eula and I'm really not sure if I'm pronouncing that right because it's a Finnish broadcaster and streaming service. And for them, the, um, the journey was about scaling and they had really serious challenges with scale that most of us will not probably have but still it was an interesting choice that they made uh, to go with certain technologies not everything was lambda based they had other technologies in the stack but their consideration their uh, limitations of the technology that they were facing were really um, pretty unique pretty unique and the third one was a social network, which was uh, mostly about journey to the microservice architecture, which is uh, also was a serverless microservice architecture. So this is really the core of this book. But the problem is it's just 40 pages. So you have this three very interesting and pretty um, actual and important use cases that only take 40 pages to describe. I, I would really love to pay for the whole book that is written in the same way. So the use cases of the companies going deeper, because if you divide this 40 pages by three use cases, you will soon realize that with a little bit of an intro, a little bit outro, a couple of illustrations, it's really difficult to go in any sort of depth analyzing the impacts of that architecture, analyzing additional choices, analyzing, I don't know, DevOps, testing strategies, um, team communication, etc. and so on. So this format is great, but authors decided to dedicate just 40 pages to this core format. So the other chapter, which was chapter, actually section number three, there were a few chapters in that section, was talking about the uh, practicum. So they are giving the exercises and they are showing how these exercises can be solved with the serverless approaches. For me, again, it's a brilliant section, really nice. It's a little bit, just a tiny bit less useful than the previous section, which talks about the real world. But again, practicum is great. And uh, I also really enjoyed the approach of one of the authors that decided to go first not with the architecture that solves the problem, but first defining the uh, quality attributes or non-functional requirements, and then evaluating the alternative architectures that all of the architectures are solving the problem, but in a different way. And which architecture is solving this specific problem in the way that will be optimal in this specific context. And this model of thinking is exactly how we should be thinking in real world when we are designing real world systems. And so this third part also is around 60 pages, which again, not huge. And together we are having around 100 pages of a very, very useful content out of 230 pages. The rest is unfortunately somewhat irrelevant and somewhat out of the context. So 
For example, there's information about how to deploy your very basic fundamental Lambda and how to create your account on AWS. Uh, I mean, if you are looking at architectures, if you're an architect evaluating your solution or learning something new about the uh, technology, definitely you know how to create an account on AWS. Why would you spend time explaining these basic things? Also, there is an overview of architectural patterns that are related to serverless, and this overview takes around 10 pages, I guess, which is, again, there are books, complete books like this one, Software Architecture Patterns for Serverless System, that I will shortly review, right, which is very relevant for this specific domain, the building event-driven microservices, although it doesn't talk explicitly about the serverless microservices, but everything that is related to event-driven and distributed is relevant for the serverless because event-driven is really a heart of serverless. So at the end of the day, you have a book with a great potential. So this one, serverless architectures on AWS, it's a great potential for this book but unfortunately it is a little bit underwhelming so it's not fully implemented not fully realized i would love authors to focus on one or two things for example this practical tasks and the use cases but go significantly deeper and go into more details than they decided to go so and that was my review of a book i would give it well generous seven stars out of ten if i would need to um, give it rating just because of this usefulness of the real life use cases i wouldn't recommend to read the whole book probably you will um, not find it well structured but these two blocks that i described hundreds of pages definitely deserves the time and if you have some recommendations about any sort of books related to architecture serverless or not event driven or not anything that caught your attention please share because uh, i will be happy to read something new and interesting and also maybe to make another review of a book so let me know what you think about this format share a couple of books that you have been recently reading and see you soon in the next videos bye